They all about to get beat up. That's, that's why I'm in my cell. Nah, I don't want to be out there. When them guards come in, it's going to be a bad day for all them. Look at the dummy running. Look. He done got locked out of his cell. Every single last one of them about to get beat down. Oh, no, no, no. Don't don't yell for them to pop your door. No, no. They ain't popping the doors. They didn't close the doors. Y'all done did what y'all did. We'll see how gangster y'all when, when that goon squad comes in. When them, when them guards come rolling in. Them COs and turnkeys come rolling in. And commence to beating y'all's asses. Oh, yeah. Y'all did y'all's thing. Y'all got y'all's point across. Uh-huh. Now, they about to get their point across. I'm about to stand right here in my cell and watch it. Yeah, y'all crashed all the way out. This must be y'all's first rodeo. When they said locked down, y'all should have. Now, it don't matter. Y'all should have locked down. Now you about to really lock down after you get knocked down. Oh, here they come. Here they come. Now y'all got to be the stupidest mother. You already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life. And we're back. The differences between prison and jail. Jail is a lot wilder at times than prison is. You're gonna meet more savages, more dudes, and I'm not gonna say savages, more dudes that are still just running wild. They still got that wild hair up their ass. They just came from the streets. They haven't been sat down long enough to start calming down. You will see more fighting, more petty stuff. Jail is a place where you got dudes stressing over What's the girl doing? Why she ain't answering the phone? Why my lawyer ain't answering? How much time am I going to get? Jail is also a place that everybody there, you got guys going home on a day-to-day -day basis. That's a major stress in itself. Here you are facing 10, 20, 50 years life, and you're watching guys go home every day. That gets under your skin. Jail is a place you're at until you're found guilty. And then if you get enough time that you have to go to prison, you've sat through the whole court proceedings. You've sat up until you've been sentenced. Now you sit until you go to prison. By the time you get to prison, you've been locked up usually about a year, give or take. Some people, I know guys that are sat in jail, two and a half, three years waiting to go to prison. Then one day their name gets called, pack it up. The following morning, they're on that bus and they're off to wherever they're going to be. Prison is wild as well. But in prison, you got dudes that are going to take it to a different level. You got dudes that really have nothing to lose. You're going to deal with more crazy guys in prison. The guys in, in jail, a lot of them just ain't got no common sense because, like I said, they just came from the streets. You got guys withdrawing from alcohol, drugs, all these different things. Once you get to prison, guys are pretty much settled in. You got some new guys that come through that will cause trouble. You got some guys that are just out of their heads that will cause trouble. A lot of them young bucks that come through and cause trouble. But for the most part, there's a whole different set of rules when you get to prison. You get to breaking those rules, somebody's going to get to breaking your teeth. Today, we're going to go over some stories from the jails, stories from the prisons, and the differences in the two. Me, personally, I would rather be in prison. Anytime they've ever come and said, hey, you going to prison tomorrow? As crazy as this is going to sound... Yes, I'm going to prison. Hey, yo, I'm out of here. They packing me up. Yeah, I'm gone in the morning. All right, man, y'all be safe. That's exactly how it goes down. You want to get up out of that jail. You want to be able to go outside, move around, have more selections on commissary, not be locked in that cell all day. It's a difference in the two places. Let's get into the differences between prison and jail. You know how to seen it. You know how to lived it.
So, let's relive it. I've never been the misdemeanor kind of guy. If I'm going to get in trouble, I'm going to lose my freedom. It's always been felonies. All the jails I've been in, you got your felony blocks and you got your misdemeanor blocks. So every time I go to jail, I get thrown on the blocks with the dudes that got murder charges, dudes that got carjackings, bank robberies, rapists. I mean, you just the worst of the worst. Guys that shoot houses up, stab people, robbers. Those are the guys I always end up in the pod with. I never made it to the misdemeanor block. Misdemeanor is when you've done some petty stuff that you really, it doesn't even really call for jail, but they're going to put you in there to get that money. Been in a lot of different jails. If I had to think of the worst jail I've been in, Richmond City Jail here in Virginia goes hard. There's no way around that to all my Richmond cats salute. The old Richmond City Jail, it goes down. I'm talking a jail that the guards can walk by, see you being beat up, see you bleeding, see 10, 15 people on you, and just look at you, and they keep it moving. Because these guards live out in the same areas as a lot of them dudes that are in there. CFCF in Philadelphia. And the House of Corrections. Two other jails I've been in. Just to name a few. Go hard. Anybody that's been through CSCF will tell you. CSCF is like the Terror Dome. You got all the sections of Philly. Out of towners. You got just everybody thrown in one single place. In different parts throughout the entire facility. You got sections like. It's crazy with Philly. You can be on. You can live on 68th Street and be beefing with 71st Street, which is three blocks over. Or be living on 70th and be beefing with 71st. Like, all the divide y'all is a piece of street. Y'all got beef in the streets. You get locked up. Everybody's going to click up according to where they're from. North Philly's going to North Philly. South Philly's going with South Philly. West Philly with West Philly. Southwest with Southwest. All them Philly boys are going to click up according to neighborhoods. You don't want to be an outsider. Only thing that saved my ass is I had spent a lot of time in Philly and dudes in there knew me. Like when I came in, oh shit, Jay, when they grab you up. Hey, this this, this is my dude, man. This is my dude right here. Yeah, he up here with pride, man. He always be up here. Yeah, he be out Southwest and what have and what not, right? I've landed in what's called the multi-purpose room. And CFCF several different times. A lot of guys, when they come in, will go in the multi purpose room. The multi purpose room, at one point, way back in the day, they had three bunks in it. Then they changed it to where it just had two bunks. It's got a toilet and a sink in there. So you got four men in this cell, one toilet, one sink. That door doesn't open and lock like all the other doors. The other doors, the guards can open from the booth. That one, they have to come up there physically, put a key in, turn it, and unlock it, right? The multi-purpose room was for overflow. It was because they had too many inmates. This used to be like a counselor's office on the top tier towards the center. And what they did was they ran out of bed space, cleared the counselor's office out, installed a toilet and a sink, put some bunks in there. All right, now we can cram more inmates in here. It's already stressful when you're in a cell with one person. Now they put you in a cell with three other people. Here y'all are locked in there. Your stomach's rumbling. And you got to go over there sit on that toilet with three other men in the cell. Dudes ain't real happy about that. The multi-purpose room was also a place that dudes fought. Something was going down and you couldn't go in this cell or that cell because the guard could see. Go up in the multi-purpose room and rumble. You know what I mean? Like It was a, it was a known thing that dudes would come in there randomly square off and fight. Prison... Guys are more seasoned on trying to get away with things. That's the bottom line. There's more convicts, dudes that know how to move. You get dudes in them jails, they'll spark off right in front of the police. Cause a huge chaos, a big scene right in front of the guards. Everybody goes to the hole. Y'all go on lock. 
happens a lot in prison, but jail, it just constantly happens. Wherever a disagreement takes place, boom, 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 dudes just get to fighting right out in the open, get locked up. There was a time we had these dudes come in. Actually, a dude came in. There was already a group of dudes come in. And this dude that comes in goes to the multi-purpose room. By then, I had been moved out of the multi-purpose room. was in a cell with a dude named Dino. They bring this new dude in. He gets to argue with some boys out there in the pod. And these dudes are deep. A whole bunch of these boys. I mean, like, they're squatted up. If they needed to at any given moment, they could come together and have 15 of them, which is probably the largest amount of one group in our entire pod at that point. Back in the day, we had ping pong. To play ping pong in the pot. Ping, 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 ping. They had a ping pong table set up down there where the TVs were. They get to arguing at the ping pong table. Something do it and do slaps do with the ping pong paddle. Fow! And I'm talking, y'all know what a ping pong paddle looks like. Takes the ping pong paddle, slaps dude in the face. Fow! I don't like ping pong. Seen a lot of fights over the ping pong table, right? Let's go to the multi-purpose room. Let's go to the multi-purpose room. Dude, after he got slapped. The one that got slapped, got all his homeboys, wasn't going to crash out and go to the hole. He wanted to really rumble dude. Let's go to the multi-purpose room, right? They go up in the multi-purpose room. They get to rumbling. Dude gets the best of him. He done whooped him now. You know what I mean? Put hands on him. But the problem is, you ain't got nobody. You just got in here. He's got 15, 16 homeboys. Think you just going to beat him up like that? His homeboys go up there and check on him. He's lumped up, knotted all up. He comes out. They tell dude, nah, y'all got to run it back. Y'all got to run it back. There's some things I know better than do. I'm not going in that cell with you, and you got all your homeboys standing out the cell, and I ain't got nobody. Because if I start getting the best of you, light bulb, don't take a, a rocket scientist to figure out that these dudes are about to squad up, come in here, and it's about to be boot gang all on my head. They're all going to come in here and jump me. They convince the dudes to run it back, so they go back up in the multi-purpose room. We're sitting out in the day room. I ain't got nothing to do with it, so I'm not getting involved. Just sitting there trying to mind my business, but, you know, glancing up at what's going on in the multi-purpose room. I just lived in there a couple weeks back. Glad I'm out of there. This is non-stop chaos. Two dudes going in, they line it up for the second time. You hear them up there thumping. Thump, 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 thump. Hear the sneakers, skirt, 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 bodies, boom, slamming against the bunks, slamming against the wall. You can just hear them in there rumbling. Next thing I knew, and they shut the door, but you don't shut the door all the way because the door shuts and locks. You got to get the guard to come up there to the key and open it. So they're up there rumbling, bloom, 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 bloom. I'm guessing old boy started getting the best of the homeboy again. I see him snatch the door open, and they squad up. They run up in that cell, and they trash this dude. It goes from... What sounded like two people fighting to it sounded like a construction zone. It sounded like football helmets hitting. It sounded like just a whole lot of shit taking place. By now, the guard is aware of what's going on. These dudes are crashing out. She sees them. All these dudes mobbed up inside the multi-purpose room. Sees dudes running out with their shirts off. Dudes running back in. She's yelling, everybody locked down, everybody locked down. I ain't got nothing to do with this. Make my way over to my cell, go up in there with Dino, shut the door. We stand at the door watching, right? Looking out. These dudes still ain't locked down. Everybody else that's not involved has locked down. This dude is knocked out in this multi-purpose room. Knocked out cold. Dudes are out, walking up and down the top tier, walking down the steps. And then you see a bunch of dudes just randomly take off running back in the cell. They're running up in the cell, kicking this dude in his face, stepping on his head, kicking him in his body, doing this dude real, real dirty. The last thing you ever want to do is get knocked out and have pissed off a lot of people. This would take place for the better part of maybe three, four minutes, which is a long, long time to be attacked after you've been knocked out. These dudes are just doing whatever they want to him. If they want to grab you and twist your leg and break it while you're unconscious, they can. They didn't do that. They broke everything else. Eventually, the guards come running in. Now, you got all these dummies locked out to the cell. None of them can get... They, hey, open the door. Open the door. Hey, John Key, open the door. She ain't let nobody in the cell. She gonna leave them right out there for the goon squad. So now they're on the top tier, standing at their cells, on the bottom tier, standing at their cells, and then comes a goon squad. I've seen it in the past where they just 
pop their cells, let them in, and we'll take them to the hole one by one. Not what they did. These dudes, these guards, these Philly guards come running in, and the ones that were still running in and out the multi-purpose rooms, they were the first ones to get it. This ain't no walk up, sir, put your hands behind your back. This is some, some Goldberg, Brock Lesnar shit where you see a 250-pound man, 300-pound man in a CO uniform just run up and tackle an inmate. Boom! Just smear him all over the, the day room. Tussle with him, rough him up, slam his face, do what he wants to him, knee him. Then you got three, four guards on one dude messing his ass up until they get him cuffed. Then one of the guards will pick him up and lead him out. Same thing with the other dudes. Dudes, ho, 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 boom. They tackle him, get him on the ground, knee him, hit him, punch him, cuff him, lead him out. They did this one by one to these dudes. Some of these dudes had even laid down. It was like, yo, 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 don't. And then they come over there, boom, throw that knee on the side of their head, comp, crush their head to the floor, start kneeing them, elbowing them, sneaking little punches on them when they're in the crowd where nobody can see, handcuff them, and lead them up out of there. The first thing they should have done, in my opinion, was go check on the dude laying in that cell. You already know who did it. Meanwhile, while they're messing all these inmates up, and they bring some, when the when them Philly guards have to squat up like that and come in, they come. Like, they bring them from all different sections. They'll tell a, a, a choir, lock down, lock down, lock down the whole pod. And once they do, the officer that's on the floor and the one behind the desk both report to there. And when they say lock down, if you ain't locked down, you will get a little kangaroo court charge, right? We got all these guards in there, and eventually, I see them. They're all down at the multi-purpose room. They've got the nurses in there. The nurses are working on this dude, trying to get this dude to be responsive. Then they come in with this board, move him on top of this, like, gurney board, pick him up, and they take off with him. Go down the staircase. Boom. Straight out the pod. They've locked up now. I, I want to say it was somewhere about 10 to 12 dudes that got locked up behind this, all, this altercation. All the guys that lived in the multi-purpose room got locked up as well. They even locked the old white dude up. Old white dude, you know ain't got nothing to do with this. But he was in there, didn't see nothing, don't know what happened. Lock his ass up too. They started charging these boys one after another after another for the incident that took place. Putting attempt murder charges, malicious wounding charges on all these dudes in this jail. And what made me think about this story one of my viewers sent me a video the other day of something that transpired in a jail that was similar but way more just brutal. Of a dude that gets to fighting and you see they're jumping him. And if you haven't seen the video, you need to just look it up. They knock the dude out. Another dude walks over. This just goes to show you how crazy this stuff gets. This stuff is real. Another dude walks over. Picks up the microwave after the man is unconscious, walks over, and slams it on his head. They slam mop buckets full of water and bleach on his head. Trash cans on his head. One dude takes a big push broom and is beating him in his face with it while he's unconscious until the broom breaks. That is the reality of some of these dudes you're locked up with. Especially when egos come into play and it's all about who goes harder. Oh, I go way harder than him. Let me show them what type of work I put in. Let me show them how I get down. And you're that dude laying on the ground unconscious, just being hit, kicked. Dudes are walking up and stomping this dude's face. I watched the video, and I can't lie, the video gave me PTSD immediately. Because I've seen things like that happen and worse. It is a terrible thing to watch a man that's unconscious, that can't fight back that pretty much looks dead, continue to be attacked like that by a group of people. And that's what they did to the man in the video I saw. And it made me think about the situation with that multi-purpose room. I could hear everything that was going on. I could see little bits and pieces, but the dude was on the ground. And with me being on the bottom down there in the day room, I couldn't see what they were doing to him, but I knew. I knew that when they brought him out, it appeared that they had a dead body on the stretcher. Dude wasn't twitching. Wasn't none of that movie stuff. The arm wasn't hanging off. They had him strapped on, secure. And then they started handing out attempted murder charges, malicious wounding charges, different charges to different dudes that did different things. The same thing with all those inmates that attacked the man in that video I'm telling you about. All them dudes were hit with attempted. I think they left that man brain dead, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. Don't quote me. I can be wrong. But after the injuries I seen in that video that man sustained, it made me think back 
to CFCF. I mean, I didn't got to rumbling in the multi-purpose rooms. I didn't got to rumbling over the ping pong table. I didn't got jumped. It is what it is. That's jail. Why lie? Why sit up here and act like, oh, I ain't never lost no fight. I'm King Kong in this bitch. Nah, that ain't how it goes. If dudes want you, they gonna get you. No matter how big you are, how tough you think you are, enough of them little son bitches jump on you, man, that's your ass. You done for. Prison, on the other hand, when I, when I say jail is, jail can be more just chaotic. That's chaotic. Prison is a lot more brutal. In prison, rather than you being a guy getting your head stomped or something like that, and there's other videos of things like this too, it can be you unconscious and somebody sitting on top of you with a knife. It can be somebody just continuously beating you in your head for five, ten minutes, and the guards aren't going to come in really until you kind of give up and you're done doing what you're doing. Because ain't none of them sign on for $15 an hour to go in there and die. Let's get into the second story. Hell, it's more fighting. A lot more fighting. It's harder to get your hands on certain weapons. It's harder to get your hands on a shank, on a knife. These guards, they walk around, and if they notice something's broken off of somewhere, they're going to lock it down, tear it apart, keep it on lock until whoever has that throws it out into the day room. And they recovered a piece of metal, plexiglass, whatever it may be. They're going to come up with it. And if they don't, y'all going to suffer. Dudes do things in jail to get everybody locked up. Everybody locked down. And nobody really makes us think about it. You spend a lot of time locked down in the jail. In prison, you getting everybody else locked down can get you hurt. You got guys in there that been in prison 20 years. They're not with being in that cell all day if they ain't got to be. You got guys that have drugs that have to be sold. You got guys that are owed money. You got commissary. You got visits. You got a lot of different things in prison that being locked down, being locked in a cell is going to hold up. So you can't just be that guy running around always getting everybody locked up. You're going to put a target on yourself to where not one or two people want to get at you, but the entire pod wants to get at you. Get out there and get to arguing with one of them officers and they say, lock down, and they lock everybody down because of you. Do something that gets everybody put in that cell because of something you did, and you better hope that they take you to the hole. Because when that door comes open, it don't matter if you built like that. It really don't matter who you are. If you've pissed off enough people, what does that matter? You know what I mean? You can be King Kong, Godzilla in there. Once some hyenas jump on your ass, enough of them, they're going to tear you out the frame, especially with the gang members. I'm going to go ahead and break it down for you. I'm going to go ahead and give you the bad news. If you got a loved one locked up that had a drug problem on the streets, and you think that being locked up is going to stop their addiction, you think, thank God he's in jail. He's in prison. He can't get high no more. You are sadly mistaken. There are more drugs in jails and prisons than most communities. You know how in the real world, if you want to go get drugs and you live in one of those nice neighborhoods, you got to travel to a better area, to a rougher area, to somebody's house to get drugs. In prison, it's as simple as just knowing who's got it or knowing who knows who's got it. You might be able to walk out your cell, or walk to the cell next to you and cop some dope. You might be able to walk over the top tier just like that, cop some crack, cop some weed. Causes a lot of chaos. A lot of fights, a lot of stabbings, and a lot of confusion. That's exactly where this story is going. We have a young white dude in our pod that's been in here better part of a year. And I'm not going to say his name because there was a whole bunch of investigating going on. I don't want to get nobody jammed up. He's been in our pod for about a year. He has ran his people dry when it comes to money. He's made up every story you can imagine on why his people need to send this inmate money. Why they need to send this inmate money. He's dragging his grandma, dragging his mom. Anybody he can get on the phone, every conversation is before it ends. Hey, well, look, I hate to do this, but I need some help, man. Then you can send $100 for me to somebody. He's been doing this off and on for about a year. Every time I would see this dude, this dude would be slumped high off the heroin. 
he gets to a point where he can't trick people no more and they start, you know, his family starts to question him. What are you doing in there? Why are we sending this much money? Like, you should have at 10 TVs, 100 pair of sneakers. You should be eating like a king. There's no possible way that we're just sending money for food and we're sending money for property. It's impossible. He gets on the phone with his girl, which is one of the few people he's honest with about what's going on, and gets to talking about the gangs. Gets to saying names, nicknames. Yeah, man, dude, dude named such and such, man, he's ready to stab me. I, I got to get this money sent. Oh, 200 some dollars. I got it from dude such and such. He's breaking everything down on the phone. Right above the phone, there is a sign that says these calls are being monitored and recorded. It says it right there above the phone. You can read it. You're an idiot. You're on the phone talking about illegal activity. They come in and lock the young white dude up, right? Take him up out of there. Now we have what's called inmate advisors. An inmate advisor is your inmate attorney. He's just another inmate. He just happens to know a little bit about law. He can read well, whatever the case may be. They've deemed him the guy that is the inmate advisor. You get in trouble, he's the one that's gonna advise you of what plea deal to take, what you're looking at, what they have against you. He's gonna try to fight your case for you. Most of them suck really, really, really bad. Like they're worse than any court appointed lawyer, almost always gonna have to take some type of plea, whether it be loss of commissary, loss of good time, you're gonna stay in prison longer, go to the hole. They locked this young white dude up, right? All over this phone. Well, while he's in the hole, they come in and they lock a lot of these blood dudes up. Just start snatching random blood dudes up. The one thing they all have in common when it comes to the dudes they're snatching up is they're drug dealers. The time the bloods were running the heroin game up there, any any heroin that came in, it came through them. And if it didn't come through them, they was gonna push up on you in one way or another, it was still gonna come back to them. They was gonna get a piece of it. Or you couldn't, you better go in and sell and do it all, because you're not gonna sell it. They lock a bunch of these dudes up. This inmate advisor dude has done talked with the, the guards and been at this little dude's hearings and why he's under investigation. He's heard the little phone recordings. He comes back in the pod, tells his cellmate about it. And this is one of those things that happens in prison. If you want to keep a secret, keep it to yourself. Don't tell nobody. Don't tell your cellmate. Don't talk about it on the phone. Tell God. Quietly sit in your cell and close your eyes and pray and tell God. And made advisor dude comes back and says, tells the celly, hey, you know why they locked all them bloods up? Man, the little white dude got on the phone and pretty much told on him. He ain't tell on him, but he was talking to his girl about the money he owed. Told her, you know, different names of where money needed to be sent, and dudes' nicknames he was getting drugs from. All these, most of these gang dudes, their nicknames are on file. The guards know their nicknames. The guards be walking through there with somebody be like, hey, Bootney, hey, come here. They'll go, okay, his nickname's Bootney. They lock all these dudes up. Amy advisor tells his cellmate, his cellmate kicks with a lot of different gang members. Goes out there and tells them, hey, the little white dude got on the phone and told. He don't tell them that he was just talking to his girl. He makes it seem like he got on the phone and told. Little time goes by, and this was one of the, this is one of the crazy things about prison. You can do something, and they bring you right back to where you were. There's no guarantee that you're going to go to a different part of the prison or another prison. If the charge doesn't up your level, like all they can get you with what he was doing was conspiracy. So they're not going to transfer you on a conspiracy charge. They're going to put you back on the yard. They'll put you in the hole, put all those gang members back in the hole, and then send you to wreck right outside, inside a big dog cage with all the gang members. Dude ain't going out in that dog cage. He's aware that he's done got these bloods locked up. No, sir. You want to go to wreck? Nope. I just want to sit in the hole. I don't want my owl wreck. I'm not going outside. I am good. I feel safe in here. No, I'm great. Do not, do not put me with nobody else. Your time in the hole is up. They kick you out the hole. They put this dude back in the pod, right? And all these blood dudes are, are talking about getting at him. Now, you got a lot of dudes that have already heard what they, as soon as he comes in, everybody sees him. His beard's and got all scruffy. He comes in with his bag. And the little blood dudes, are, I'm not going to say little because some of these dudes weren't little. The blood dudes was talking about what they was going to do. Some of the old heads, some of not even old heads, just different dudes that have been down a long time. Dudes that were younger and had a lot of time. I was like, yo, man, y'all can't be, y'all can't be, you know what I mean, pushing up on that dude like that and doing nothing to him because 
Y'all gonna get us all jammed up. If y'all gonna do it, do it outside or do it in the chow and get yourself locked up. Don't do it in here. They don't listen. They make it seem like, ah, right, yeah, yeah, y'all right, y'all right. And these ain't, it ain't like these dudes pushed up on them and scared them. These are dudes that are respected. Like when they come to you, you should listen to what they say. They know what they're talking about. They've been doing this a long time. They're trying to tell you what y'all doing is going to get all of us jammed up. They smash all the way out. And it's not all of them. And at the time, we had a heavy, heavy blood presence in our pod. Out of 86 men, I would say we had a good 25, 30 bloods in our pod. Then we had a lot of lifers, a lot of dudes that were doing double digits, 40, 50, 60 years, a lot of murderers, a lot of guys with heinous crimes. I'm in seven building. I mean, this is where it goes down. This is the roughest building at the time in Greensville. And the pot I'm in is where they dumped the gang members. They were dumping the hole. Guys coming out the hole, they were just dumping them in our pod so they could try to control all the gang members, all the violence to one unit. These dudes, yeah, yeah, you right, you right, you right. One of the dudes goes to the little, you know, white dude and tells him, look, man, you got a lot of people locked up. Like, dudes want to do something to you, so you're going to have to pay. He already got everybody locked up behind not being able to pay. And y'all's solution to this is to apply more pressure. More pressure. They tell him, you got X amount of days for this money to hit, you know, this person's books. Or we're going to ride down on you. We're going to stab you up. We're going to smash you out. We're going to come in your cell. We're going to end you. Like... You got our homeboys locked up, and for everybody that got locked up, you got to pay. Simple as that. Like, they went ahead and ran what he had, took the commissary he had, cosmetics he had, TV, everything of value in a cell. They done took all that. They ain't put hands on him, right? Here we go again with that talking to your cellie. The dude that he, they put him in the cell with, he knows he's been in the spa before. He tells him, I'm not, I can't pay that. My people ain't going to pay it. I don't know what to tell them. I'm going to check up out of here. Like, I'm going to check in, go back to the hole, and hopefully go to another part of the prison. Dude don't respect that. He goes to one of the blood dudes and tells him, hey, look, don't say nothing. My celly, yeah, he about to check in on y'all. Yeah, he said he ain't paying none of that. Said he can go to the hole, try to go to another part of the prison, or buck until they ship him up off here. He can't pay y'all's money. Now, he was just giving them dudes leeway to let them know, look, stop applying pressure. Like, what they should have done is just hitting for little bits of money. Look, we need $100 every week. Can't go to a man that can't pay a $250 debt and then say, hey, we need $1,000 this week or we're going to kill you. You know what I mean? I'm sure y'all think y'all already know where this is going. We've got an old dude that sleeps two cells down from me, I think it was. Maybe three. I think it was two cells down. Works in the kitchen. It's rumored how much money this man has got. Everybody talks how they've seen his statements, his sellies. be like, man, he's got 50000 60000 on his books. Yeah, he gets out six months. This dude was a child hall worker, but he was a hustler. He was also known to, he's an old head now. Been down a very, very long time. He's also known to buy drugs from people and sell little drugs to dudes that don't want other guys to know. They're doing drugs. You got some guys that'll shoot dope right in front of everybody. And some guys are on the DL that don't want to go to the dope boys. So this old head would buy up dope. He had all this money. He gets wind of what's going on. And I'm going to introduce y'all to buying someone's debt. He gets wind of what's going on where these boys are pressing this dude for this $1,000. They're going to end up hurting him. Everybody's going to end up locked back up. The pod's going to go back on lock. Everybody's got drugs. You're going to have to flush them drugs or boop, make them disappear. He ain't with all that. He stands to make more money with the pod being open and running than with them being locked down. He's compiled a good amount of drugs. If he has to flush this stuff, he's going to take a major hit. He goes to the blood boys respectfully and tells them, I'm going to buy his debt. Buying someone's debt is when you owe me money, right? You can't pay me my money, so I'm going to do something to you. I can sell your debt, the debt you owe me, to somebody else. Look, he owes you 1000 I'll give you 800 leave him alone, and I'll figure it out with him. Deal? Deal. He goes to the blood dudes, buys the young white boy's debt. And I say white boy again because it's just the terminology that comes with prison. Buys a young white dude's debt and tells a young white dude, I go home in a couple months, 
take this as a learning lesson and stay the hell out of trouble, man. You can get us all locked down, and then I'm going to have to do something to you, run my time up. Before I do that, I'd rather just get him $800. He's sending the money off his books to wherever. Your debt is done. You don't owe me anything. Stay out of trouble. That was the end of that situation. He bought the debt. Dudes came out the hole. They couldn't do nothing to him. It's about seven months later, he got his head split wide open on another dope debt, and the old man was gone home. There's a big difference in what I just told y'all when it comes to prison and jail. In jail, none of that would have ever been really resolved like that. It would have just been violence. You got guys that are still stuck in that street mentality that don't really move militant, that don't think as if this is chess. They look at everything just like checkers. They're just looking at that move. A lot of these older dudes, dudes who've been in prison a long time, look at prison like chess. What is my next move? What do I need to do next? What do I stand to benefit or lose from this if I let this happen? He didn't care what happened to the white dude. What he cared about was his money. He cared about all the product he had. He had to flush down the toilet. He cared about doing something to one of these dudes because he lost all his money and not going home in five or six months. Jail, prison, the nut house, detention center, any facility that you are held at, against your will, a place you've been put at because you've done something wrong, is no place you ever want to be. This is a world that you see on TV if you've never been there. That TV does no justice. They just show you the little crazy moments. They don't show you the officers messing people up. They don't show you the people really getting high like that or the people sending money and money being received and what don't happen when the money don't hit. They just show you the fight. You don't know the whole story. I'm here to tell y'all this is a world you want no parts of. Around me right now, there's trees, there's houses, there's cars. Beautiful life. On my worst day out here is better than my best day in there. Stay free, people. If you want to know what jail is like, what prison is like, keep listening. Keep watching. There's plenty of channels. If you don't like mine, go watch this. But we're here for a reason. Some of us. I'm here not just to share, but because I care. This has done a lot to me. I watched another YouTuber the other day, a female, and I'm going to get into some of her videos soon that was crying because she woke up out of a bad dream from the trauma she had dealt with in life, from the PTSD that came along with what she had been through in life. That is real. I've woken up covered in sweat. I've woken up choked up because it's like I'm there again. Live your best life. Stay out of jail. Stay out of prison. Don't do dumb things. Always have a plan A, B, and C. Fake it till you make it. Bag groceries, flip burgers, cut grass, do whatever you got to do. Because if you think you're smarter than the police, if you think that you're not eventually going to get locked up, you're stupid. Look at Big Meech. Look at all the ones that did it before all of us. And look at where they're at. I've got more friends locked up than I could uh, probably do stories on. And the only reason I'm here today is because, A, I was lucky enough to get out of this life before I did something too bad. And, B, because I woke up. But anyways, man, these jails, the tent centers, these prisons, these facilities, they're all just crazy world outside of this already crazy world we live in. And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. That's the life. It's all my real ones. And there are some real ones watching. Because y'all still watching me. Man, y'all know how we do. Salute. How are you going to run up a debt? Get it paid off. And then still get your head cracked. Man, you got to be the stupidest mother.